Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Azilic Explains. Today I'm going to be reviewing four WordPress plugins that you can use to speed up your website. So as we dive in here, I want to point out first that if you're an Azilic publisher, not all of these WordPress plugins may work with your website. And so one of the things you might want to do is uh, ensure that as you're working on your site that uh, there aren't any conflicts. Furthermore, if you're using the Azilic Site Speed app, many of these features may be unnecessary for your site. That said, let's dig in. First, I'm going to go down to the very bottom here where I've downloaded a plugin called WP Rocket. WP Rocket is one of many different caching applications that are out there. WP Rocket is uh, compatible with Azilic if you're an Azilic publisher. If not, is, uh, WP Rocket is one of the better uh, caching apps that provides additional features. They do offer a premium version. As you can see, I'm getting into my dashboard here. I do uh, have a plus license and I recommend it. Um, if it is the only caching plugin that you use, it is fairly inexpensive and uh, there's a lot of really great things you can do with it. Number one is you can set uh, different caching rules for both mobile and desktop devices. Uh, this will help with browser side caching. So even if you have a CDN or something like that enabled, um, it can help a lot with that material. Uh, the cache li lifespan here can help you a lot with, if you get Google page speed reports that say things like sh you should have an effective caching policy uh, in the recommendations section, uh, setting this caching to uh, basically beyond 24 hours and in many cases uh, up to 30 days can help a lot. Uh, you can see they say to reduce lifespan to 10 hours or less if you notice issues. Uh, but for the most part, if you're a static content producer, um, you can make this a fairly long time span. Going further, uh, WP Rocket is one of the more reliable uh, plugins that you can use to minify things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can also use it to optimize your CSS delivery, which means making the files smaller or uh, making the way that they're delivered in your site, whether it's the header, the footer, the body tag, uh, more efficient. You can also uh, defer. Uh, JavaScript and then uh, do safe mode for jQuery and things along those lines as well. Um, you may need to play around a little bit with your site and use it in test mode to figure out what configurations actually work well with your site. Uh, when you play with these types of tools and you're working on site speed, sometimes things can affect the deliverability of your site, so it's important to always clear your cache whenever you have uh, WP Rocket enabled in general for any changes that you make and then to look at your site in incognito mode, both on your desktop and mobile device. And that'll help you better understand whether or not the changes are affecting uh, the way your website displays. Lastly, you can get into things like lazy loading images uh, and enable the same thing for iframes and videos. Uh, you can even replace YouTube iframes with preview images, and this can uh, in improve the deliverability of images. So again, if you're downloading PageSpeed tool insights and you're seeing that you should uh, defer images or uh, load images that uh, do not load in the viewport off screen. This is a really great uh, tool for that. Uh, disabling things like emojis or WordPress embeds that are unneeded is another way you can uh, improve the JavaScript parsing and things like that on your site. You can also preload stuff. So when your call your um, website is calling out to things like uh, exterior fonts um, or uh, places that uh, are also call calling on files. Uh, you can do URL prefetches, which basically means that the page is already loading these in the background, which can speed up load times as well. This is often a recommendation inside of Google Lighthouse. And so if you're getting that recommendation, you just run a Lighthouse performance report. All you'd have to do is go to uh, inspect and over here to audits, performance, and then run audit and oftentimes it will tell you to activate preloading and you can just take those URLs and throw them right in here. Lastly, they do have advanced rules that so you can put in special rules to never cache certain things. You can connect it to your database, your CDN. Uh, they have additional add-ons for things like Google Analytics and things along those lines as well. Moving on, one of the other plugins that I really like is called Asset Cleanup. So we're going to go up to the top here, and I've already downloaded it. It's called Asset Cleanup Pro, and I do have the pro version of this as well. Again, it's a very, pretty affordable plugin that you can use, and Asset Cleanup basically allows you to identify using PageSpeed tools and things like that, different scripts and files that you may not want to uh, show on all your pages or write certain rules so that you're not loading all the JavaScript and CSS on every page of your site when it's not needed. 
It also gives you some additional uh, tools and things like that to cut out some unnecessary scripts and things like that that get added to your WordPress site. So um, things like hide WordPress core files from the assets list. Um, these are really simple things that can make a small difference on your PageSpeed tools. When you see uh, recommendations inside of PageSpeed Insights to tell you to clear out and make your uh, script delivery more efficient, uh, these are the types of small things that you can do. You can minify files here as well. Uh, I don't recommend combining CSS and JS files. They tell you that here. Uh, and then you can unload common things on the site that you may not need. Like, again, here's emojis. Some of these things are overlaps with WP Rocket, but um, in this case, it gives you a few more options. The big benefit, though, of Asset Cleanup Pro is you can do these bulk unloads. So in my case, it's on my home page here where this exists. I'm going to open this up here. And what it's going to do is it's going to load all the exterior scripts that are running on this page down here at the bottom. As my page loads up. Now that my page is loaded, you can see here, here's the plugin, and you can see, you know, I've got MailChimp, uh, a, a plugin that I actually only use on one page, so I can unload it on all pages and just make an exception for the page where it needs to load. Uh, I have some social widgets that are loading on most of the pages. I have my exterior CMS that uh, does my translations, my core theme, but then I also have some other things here that are external scripts, things like uh, some fonts that I only use on certain pages and other aspects of my site. And I can unload these or write certain rules to where maybe it just uh, loads asynchronously on this page or is deferred to another page. But that's one of the big benefits of this. And it can help you get rid of a lot of the um, warnings about uh, deferring or render blocking CSS and JavaScript on your site. You can look at those respective files and scripts inside of your page speed reports and then use this tool to identify where they're at and where they're coming from and see if turning them off makes your site faster and, and doesn't disrupt the experiences. Another plugin uh, that I like that goes around um, this sort of kind of turning things off, making things more efficient, is uh, WP Disable. So this one does the same thing as a lot of the other ones do. Uh, you can see here it's under optimization.io here. Um, but it gives you a couple more features. So you see, once again, the disable emojis, remove query strings, all these things I'm doing through WP Rocket or Asset Cleanup as well. But it also allows me to do things like load external scripts asynchronously. The same thing for fonts as well. You can actually put them in here, the actual URLs from your fonts, which, again, you'll get from those Lighthouse reports. You can put those in here, and it'll load them async. And then you can also disable things like Google Maps, uh, get rid of the... Uh, referral spam. You can uh, do DNS prefetch through here as well. But you can also minimize requests from con common fonts like Google Fonts or Font Awesome, which will often show up in your page speed reports. Um, you can disable the WordPress uh, password strength meter uh, JavaScript on non related pages. The same thing with dash cons uh, from the admin toolbar. So these are all things that are getting loaded on your pages that are really only necessary when you're an admin or on specific pages, and they're just small scripts that you can get rid of that make a very small difference, but make a difference nonetheless. You can also get into tags here, and you can remove tags that you may not need. So this Windows Live Writer tag, WordPress Generator tag, these are just notes inside of the scripts themselves, the files um, that can be removed that are unnecessary. And you can go further here as well. You can disable different aspects of your site. But I'd be very careful about this. And if you have comments and things like that, you don't want to disable this kind of material. Uh, the same thing for SEO. If you, you know, you can remove the Yoast comment from your head section. Um, it's basically just the Yoast plugin kind of text. It's just a couple words. Um, there's a number of different things you can disable here, but for the most part, um, you want to keep most of this in place. Last but not least, and this is one we've talked about before, is the short pixel plugin. You can see it installed here. Now I go back over to short pixel and this is my screen and you can see we talked about this in a previous uh, video where we talked about serving images in next gen formats and compressing them but uh, short pixel actually gives us an additional amount of things that we can do. I can apply compression to thumbnails. I can act 
Uh, I can compress all my images and keep backups of my originals. I remove the EXIF tag on the images as well. Um, it requires, if you're going to do all the lossless compress compression, um, it requires a small investment of they do it based on credits. But for most sites, for 20 bucks, you can compress all your image files and serve them in WebP. And then lastly here, I can convert all my PNG images that aren't transparent background to JPEG, which will make them slightly smaller, along with my compression. Uh, I can serve them in WebP, which is the thing we've talked about previously. And then last but not least, there's all these different rules that you can add here as well that will make sure that you don't uh, compress or do something to your images that allows them to be served uh, in a way that goes outside of the way you would want for your website. And then you would just go to save and, save and go to bulk process and it would compress all of them. And um, if you watch our previous video, you can also serve them in web peer as well. Hopefully that's helped you a little bit to speed up your website if you're a WordPress user. Um, one or all of those plugins could potentially be used on your website, even if you just use them for one feature or another. Um, they can help you essentially uh, solve some of those pesky problems that you see popping up in PageSpeed reports. I'm Tyler Bishop, and this has been another episode of Azoic Explains.